Welcome to Woodbury Writes Podcast. I'm your host, Sandy Carlson, and I'm here today with Carl Baker, who is a media operator in the television industry. His books include Bliss and Her Friends, Better Than Toys, and Carl and His Friends. Welcome, Carl. Thank you for joining us today. Why, thank you. Thank you for having me. I've spent time with your website, which is blissandherfriends.com, and yeah. Uh, gotten to know your your book, and I, I just love the concept of the sort of statement that the book makes about a, a child named Bliss, and then the prompt that invites the, the adult reader to engage the child in conversation on that topic. Would you just talk about where where the concept for the book came from? The word, the word Bliss in a Friends came from is from, uh, I received inspiration from my mother. My mother actually wrote a book called Carl and His Friends. So she wrote that when I was very young about the kids in my neighborhood. She realized I, when she bought me a toy, I didn't really play around with it that much. But when I had friends over, then I, the toy became a lot better and I enjoyed playing with my friends as well as the toy. So she took me and a bunch of my friends and what they liked, what they enjoyed in the neighborhood. And she wrote a book about me and all my friends. <laughs> So uh, I would say before the pandemic, um, in 2015, my mother passed away and I just wanted to uh, write write something or just remember her by, and I saw her book <laughs> I had in my house here. And I just wanted, it just gave me some inspiration to write something to remember her by. So uh, me and my girlfriend, we came up with Bliss and her friends. And I got the inspiration from the story from the book is from my girlfriend. She's having trouble with uh, friends from New York and friends in Connecticut and uh, juggling them and how she can spend time with each one of them. So I realized that if she's having problems with finding friends and making new friends and how to handle it, I believe young people would also, young kids have problems as well. So that's where my inspiration for the story behind it and then she helped me write the different questions so that when uh, either parents or any guardian reading to the child, they can interact with one another with the questions and the story. That's a, a beautiful background to the story. So you and your mom were, were close your entire life? Yes. Yes. Well, my dad was at work a lot. So she, uh, she was a stay-at-home mom. So she would help take care of me uh, while my dad was at work. I had brothers and sisters, but uh, they were a lot older than me. So most of them were out of the house. <laughs> so I grew up a little bit by myself. So you had your mom to yourself. Did she do other writing or were you her, her sole inspiration? I was more her sole inspiration, but she loved kids. So she would actually teach, actually teach English as a sacred language to different um, kids at my school. And she would babysit a lot of the kids in the neighborhood. So she just had a lot of love to give. Um, and I sometimes would get jealous because she would just give her love to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yes, but yeah, I had a lot of time between me and my mother. And you mentioned your, your girlfriend moving from New York City to Connecticut. And you're a Pennsylvania native who came to Connecticut. Did you experience that same kind of challenge when you, um, when you came Northeast that way uh, in terms of those challenges? Or did you have an easier time of it? So with me, I'm just a friendly, natural, friendly person who gets along with everybody. So for me, um, I made I can make friends kind of easily. <laughs> but um, but coming from Pennsylvania and coming to Connecticut, um, yeah, not knowing anybody. So I had a so my way of meeting new friends was getting involved with different sports. I grew up loving sports and just playing all different types of sports. So I would meet people just being on different teams. Um, flag football, volleyball, baseball, softball, soccer. So I just enjoyed meeting different people. Then at work, um, so I came from Pennsylvania to Connecticut because of work, <laughs> relocation because of work. So that just made it me, me easier. And when you have different friends around, it makes coming to a new area just more enjoyable. You mentioned to me in a previous conversation that you were not a big fan of writer and you don't consider yourself a writer, and yet you accomplished this book. Was it your your girlfriend's support that got you through, or I'm just curious, 
what what was your writing process like? So my yeah, my writing process is probably a little different than others. Um, yeah, I don't like to write too much because <laughs> I always <laughs> feel like um, I can't always complete my thought or have a good story that everybody would want to hear. But uh, but yes, my girlfriend played an instrumental part in just giving me support and also helping me along with the process of writing the book. I guess a lot of other people could relate that not, I don't consider myself a writer <laughs> because I just, I never really seeked out to try to write a book. <laughs> the inspiration came from um, other ideas that I was just able to put every, all the pieces to, together and able to publish this one book. And, um, and I also was able to publish this book because my mother, I used the same publisher my mother used back when she published her book. So I used the same company to actually publish this book. Could you, um, could you just uh, say a little bit more about how you put the pieces together? You had the idea during COVID. There was a problem that really transferred across age groups. Can you talk about how, how did you get it illustrated? How did you develop the website? How, how did you, what did the publishing piece look like when you approached your mom's publisher? Getting the ideas together during that time. So I had that concept from my girlfriend. So just getting friends together and then trying to put pieces together, like what would my characters look like? <laughs> How do I want to represent this? So I'm a, I'm a big person that, um, of diversity. So I like to mingle with all different types of cultures and groups because I believe this, we're all the same, which is we just maybe just look a little different on the outside. So I try to incorporate, and that's why my cover has all different types of people and cultures on the cover of it. But putting the, the, the story together, that was a little tricky <laughs> because uh, just trying to, trying to get a creative beginning, middle, and end. So the, the first I had to create the main character. <laughs> so the main character came about, so if we were to have a child, what would we name her? So we actually, if we were going to have children, we would name her Bliss. So that's how I got the main character, Bliss, and her friends. And then from there, we just, I just thought about like my nieces and nephews going to school. How would they meet new friends? Um, what were they going through? Things like that. And then we added the questions. So that is more interactive with parents and their child. Yeah, my whole concept is just trying to help other people, help people connect with one another. And just um, hopefully I can help people make new friends. That's great. And who was your illustrator for the book? So the illustrator came from the publisher. Um, what I did with the illustration is I I found pictures, I guess stock photos, stock pictures, and then I put it together how I wanted it to be laid out. And then I took, uh, put the words and my illustrations together, sent that to the publisher, and then they actually made it come to life. They actually got their own um, illustrator from the, put my concept in their, I guess in their drawings. And this was all during the, the dark days of COVID, right? Yes. So I had a little extra time. I wasn't, I was going to work. I still had to go in every day, but I had a little bit more time to actually do some things on the side. That's great. And was it a smooth process working with an artist who was working with your, your storyboard, with your, your ideas? Actually, actually it was. At first, I didn't like the, some of the characters that they put put on the cover, but I just just tell them um, just to change a couple of little pieces around, and they were very accommodating. Um, so they were very easy to work with. A lot of back and forth, but that's you wanted to wanted to look the way you wanted to look. So yeah, as long as I was paying for it, <laughs> they were willing to change, <laughs> make the changes I would like. That's that is super. And and who is who is your audience? Uh, who has the book reached so far? So far, more, uh, I'm going to say younger kids, because uh, it's for maybe four to eight-year-olds. And when I've been doing book readings, uh, I love the interaction because their mind is just so creative and imaginative. And I love going back and forth. And when I ask those questions to the kids, they come back with such creative answers. <laughs> and uh, it's great. Do you uh, see yourself writing in this vein again, do you, does, does Bliss have another challenge she might face? Yes. I, I do have some other ideas uh, in place for, because just 
just walking around my neighborhood and just walking around just different areas. I'm a people watcher. <laughs> so <laughs> I get a lot of my inspirations from just people watching and um, just in the, just watching people interact with one another. So I do have some other ideas for Bliss. And then I also I might incorporate my dog, <laughs> my dog <laughs> Indy. So, cause I actually put Indy, my dog in Bliss and her friends. I don't know if you know this, there's a gray dog in the book uh, with Bliss. So uh, that's actually my real dog. <laughs> so I might, I might start doing Bliss and her friends adventures and I'm um, on a separate, separate series. That That is terrific. And, you know, as a, I'm a high school English teacher, and one of the things I try to communicate to my students is that, that the first texts were social experiences are about interacting and mm -hmm. entertaining and um, sharing it. You know, it was really a fairly recent phenomenon in the history of stories that people would go off with their paperback or whatever and sit under a tree in a mm -hmm. solitary way, you know, and you know, even in the 19th century, people got the newspaper and the, the serialized novels were in there and meant to be read out loud and shared for the sound of the prose. So it's nice to see that children's books and your children's book is recreating that engaging activity. And what I loved about your questions, they, they invite conversation and they let the, invite a child to open up and share from whatever point of view they're, they're coming from, whatever their experience is. There's no wrong answer. And I can imagine it's got to be a lot of fun with your book, with a group of small kids. Right. And also with this age of social media, not a lot of people in a really interact with one another. Like people post stuff and just hope and have their friends look at their posts. And that's how people tell each other what's going on instead of actually calling each other on the phone or face to face relaying all the information about what's going on in your life. So I, I just wanted to bring it back to um, just more interactive one-on-one -on -one with one another. That's great. I bet your mom is very proud of you watching watching from, uh, from beyond and seeing what you've accomplished. And I wish you great success with that book. I'm just curious, what does somebody as, as outgoing and as social and as caring as you, what do you like to read when you're on your own with a book? For me, I like, I'm more of a technical person. So I like reading different manuals, um, just learning about different mysteries as well. I just I just recently read this one book called Move, Who Moved My Cheese? So it's about different changes going on and how to react to different changes in your life, different changes in situations. Will you react one way or do you stay back and just wait until things change on you? Or how quickly can you change with the situation? So I believe that was a that was a good book that I just finished reading because I, I mean at my at my job things are changing all the time. Uh, somebody recommended that to see how different people would react to different changes going on. So yeah, I'm more of a mystery thriller and uh, more self self improvement books now. That sounds like a great book. I wonder if Bliss will ever encounter some cheese that gets moved. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh, Carl, would you, would you share a selection from, from Bliss so our, our listeners can get a sense of, of your, your writing style and this uh, lovely book that you've created? Um, so you want a little expert of it? Yeah, that'd be great. So this is Bliss. She enjoys going to school and playing with her friends. So with the questions we want to ask right off the bat, do you enjoy going to school? And there's not every kid enjoys going to school with bullying these days. Um, just social media, sometimes friends and people just don't want to go to school anymore. And uh, sometimes they're afraid. You got kids coming to school with guns, just things, too many things going on in people's lives that you just never know what's going on at home, that they might just not want to go to school. So we just want to make sure they're okay with going to school. <laughs> then do you have a favorite teacher? And what, ga what games do you like to play with your friends? I think everybody going to school has a favorite teacher. <laughs> So you just never know how the teacher can impact somebody's life. And then you might not even see it now, but later on, you, you remember what that teacher said to you later on in life that can help you propel you. And then games, I always like playing games with my friends. So I just like wanted to see what kind of games uh, these kids are playing these days and what, what, what they're doing with their friends. 
That's great. And what is what do you feel is the best line in that book? Would you would you share that with us? Yeah, the best line for me, I believe, is the last page. Friends come and go, so you never know who your next friend will be. And I, I just challenge kids to either meet the person next to them or meet somebody new. And you, you could be a friend for life or just be a friend for a couple of months or a couple of years, but you just never know where that relationship relationship can take you. Right, but the but the kindness of friendship lasts forever, regardless of the the direction the relationships go in, right? Or if people move right. on. So you just want to be friendly to everybody. Absolutely, that is a great message, Carl. And I I, I hope our listeners will go to Bliss and Her Friends dot com and sample your book, read about you and and your inspiration, and enjoy the the really lovely and wonderful illustrations that celebrate how richly diverse our world is. It, it's a it's a pleasure to see and I hope that your book reaches lots and lots of kids and and Bliss's adventures continue. I'll be I'll be uh, keeping an eye out for it. Well thank you. Thank you for having me so much. Thank you for being a part of Woodbury Rights. <laughs>